my pleasure this morning to invite for this morning's talk my partner in criminal matters, <laughs> the Reverend Anne Shan. <laughs> <It's>, she, <laughs> she is really, this morning I heard someone, Reverend John, speaking about, or Reverend Michael, I think it was, and it was endorsed by Reverend John as one of the hardest workers around. The, those weren't their words, but it is. She has really dedicated her life to the spread of truth. And so this morning now, I'm sure she's coming to you with a message that will, enable, that will encourage you to, and incite you to continue on this path of truth that we all have all chosen to walk. Reverend Dan. Thank you, my beloved Kyle. Welcome, welcome, everyone, this morning. Counselor, didn't you hear that, don't about the criminal? <laughs> Miss Barnes, the one you received me, right? Let me extend my own words of welcome to everyone this morning and to those joining us on the World Wide Web. A morning that we can truly give thanks and rejoice in. It's Remembrance Day, and as a girl guide and a past ranger, I remember these mornings with thanks in my heart because at Westwood we used to travel in a truck from Westwood to Falmouth to the center to stand up in the hot sun. <laughs> yes, it builds character, so I give thanks and for those who have served our nations across the world. Many thanks for the investment of their life and their effort. And to continue this morning of gratitude. Gratitude to my other friend in other matters, Mrs. Kidu, who is with us this morning. And I see another couple over there that I haven't seen for a long time. I won't call out your name. <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining us. This month of November, we look at prosperity. And this is indeed prosperity when we truly can give thanks. We look at developing and celebrating our consciousness of good. So I begin this morning with John 11. And this is taken from the Judah Christian Bible, which gives the full story of Jesus the Wayshore bringing Lazarus, brother to Mary and Martha from the dead. Lazarus had been in the grave for three days before. Jesus got to Bethany where they lived. The verse that interests me is verse 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. End of quote. Another event like this about giving thanks was recorded in Matthew 14, verse 19. It goes like this, and he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes looking up to heaven. He blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. Well, that is history, whether or not you want to quibble whether it happened, but the feeding of the 5,000. Both incidents have the idea of expansion of consciousness by looking up which is focusing on the source of spiritual substance and giving thanks or blessing, whatever the idea that needed to be extended, expanded, either the movement of the life force through Lazarus or the expansion of substance into food to feed the multitude. Something happened in the consciousness of Jesus the way sure. Elizabeth Sand Turner in Your Hope of Glory explains it as this, and I quote, Gratitude opens our consciousness to receive more. I will give another approach on how the state of mind attributed to gratitude works. 
This is taken from an anthology of demonstrations printed by the Science of Mind publications. It's a story about two young people driving out on a beautiful night filled with the radiance of the moon at about 50 miles per hour. They were enjoying their relationship, basking in, basking in the beauty on a Denver, Colorado highway. Out of nowhere, two vehicles crashed into them. The state highway patrol gave out this information. The couple were hit by two vehicles racing between the speed limits of 95 to 110 miles per hour. The first hit ruptured their gas tank and the second car sent the couple's station wagon sliding on its side and it ended right side up. The details I have given to emphasize the severity of the incident. But the section of the story that held my attention, I will quote parts from its transcript. The young man's name was Robert and the young woman was concerned about the intense heat and increasing shortage of oxygen. Although she was strangely calm, the thought, and I quote, this could be the end, came into mind. But instead, she said, a curiously beautiful thing happened. With sudden new strength, my concern for Robert and my conviction that God was indeed with us flooded my whole being with a towering determination to get fresh air to him and then to get him out of the car. All of this took but a split second of time. I again called out to God, strongly feeling his presence. I spontaneously exclaimed, thank you God that you are with us. Thank you God that you are with us. My hand moved to the handle of the window on the left. It worked. The window moved. I wondered if that involuntary thank you had released the miracle. End of quote. The end of the story, they both got out of the car without loss of consciousness and neither had injuries which were disfiguring. Two sides of gratitude. Jesus the way sure, and this young couple invoking the law by using gratitude. We are reminded in Ephesians 5 verse 20 and 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, in everything giving thanks. Not in some things when times are great, but always giving thanks for all things unto God. The title of my sharing this morning is gratitude, an investment in living a prosperous and abundant life. The use of the words thanksgiving and gratitude may seem interchangeable, but actually thanksgiving is noted as an expression of gratitude, an expression of pleasure about something or grateful for something that someone may have given, or a kindly expression of appreciation, but gratitude Gratitude is noted as a quality of being. A quality of being thankful. Readiness to share appreciation. Return kindness, recognition. A strong feeling of appreciation and acknowledgement. Regard and respect. These are key words worth considering. Gratitude, a quality of being, channels through appreciation, kindness, acknowledgement, respect, regard, and recognition. Why I use the word investment, there are two aspects of the word. One, to invest is to devote time or energy to an undertaking with the expectation of a worthwhile result. And the second, provides something with an added quality. In other words, increasing the value added. So why is it prudent to embody gratitude as a quality of being? Living from a state of gratitude, and this explanation given is not what I mean. This I quote from Dr. Carlton Whitehead. First, when we are told to be grateful for the good we have, 
too often the implication is just be glad things are not worse. This is basically negative, and while better than complaining, denies the limitless potential of life. Secondly, much <laughs> that has been said and written concerning thanksgiving to God conveys the idea that God hungers for man's praise and appreciation, and not getting it will cut off the supply of good. Here he goes on to state that the attribute, the attribute is tending to make the divine human, or making God in man's image and likeness. The thanksgiving and the praise is for our consciousness, not God's. Hmm. The function of living from a state of gratefulness, a quality of being, is twofold. One, it focuses our attention on the good manifesting in our experience rather than the opposite. Thus, it enlarges the vessel, measuring our good, because mind power flows toward and increase the object of our attention. Mind power flows toward and increase the object of our intention. And secondly, it establishes the attitude of expectancy and faith that releases the energy of mind into our chosen channel of expression of good in our lives and affairs. So it's twofold. It enlarges us because it focuses our attention on what it is that we want and it releases this attitude of expectancy and faith that allows it to happen because those are laws. Most of the time we do say thanks for services rendered or if someone does something pleasing to us or for us. But in living from a state of gratitude, let us assess the present position in terms of appreciation recognition for what we have in our internal and exterior, exterior world. Acknowledgement also of who or what shows up in our world of affairs. Where does acceptance play as part of circulation in our experiences? What about regard and respect for our world of experiences and the importance of kindness, giving without expectation of return? That's all in the assessment to come up with a spirit of gratitude. But anyway, Henry Thoreau stated, and I quote, the question is not what you look at, but what you see. Not what you look at, but what you see. So in exercising our gratitude muscles, let us assess what we have in our eternal world. That is the invisible attributes of qualities, talents, and abilities and the exterior world of form that belongs to us. So let us start with the, the invisible ones first, the qualities, talents, and abilities. If one was to place a value on our ability to think, to love, to express compassion, or for friendship, our ability to laugh, facilitate laughter and humor, to be able to commune with our indwelling presence and power, to motivate or encourage others, to offer genuine assistance to others, to sing, to dance, paint, use of social media, the computer for some of us, those of us who are so articulate, readily recalling facts, information, to be able to think quickly and find solutions, to analyze, to think with clarity, mathematical ability, ability to speak languages, to plan, to manage, to administer discipline, etc., etc. Hmm. What would be the price tags placed on any of those attributes that we came into this plane of existence with? And we have taken the time and effort to educate ourselves, develop our skills, and transform our lives. What is the value? This is I give you must exceed mere price tax, but a sense of tremendous value and worth when you really think about it. Your ability to think, to love, to laugh, all that. So if we could do without all of the above then, 
what would be their usefulness in having these qualities, which is really not so. It's just that we're not paying attention sometimes. If an individual can do without something, he has no purpose for it, or it has no value to his existence. So let us think about those intelligibles that we have. Let us jump now to our exterior world of form. Is there anything that we own or possess or having responsibility for that we can do without? Then it has no value. If this is not the case, then what we possess must have some sort of value to us. All right, experiment. Look at our friends in the audience. You have any friends or associates? Mm. <laughs> what is the value of the individual friendship? Someone that understands our idiosyncrasies and still remain our sounding board, our confidant. I say, thank God for friends, husbands, wives, associates, or some of us would have to pay for therapy every day to remain sane. Someone said to me, and they shall remain nameless, that in the nights when they are awake, and listen to the breathing of the persons in their household, there's a deep sense of gratitude and security that moves through their consciousness. And for those of us who have pets, that unconditional adoration is immeasurable. Right, Rev? <laughs> so when one assesses what it is, that we possess and attribute value added, our consciousness immediately experiences a lift, a leap in expansion because of the deep feelings of appreciation and gratitude, fulfillment, and even a sense of contentment. This leads to the recognition of things that we may have missed in assessing our very long inventory. How do we sustain this expanding inventory of assets, internal and external. One thing is not to take anything for granted. Here I mean we no longer find pleasure in the value of the invisible qualities, abilities, or talents, or the form that we own or possess. Sadly, that might stretch to who or what we entertain in our lives or show up in our world of affairs. Whether the label is good or seemingly bad, everything has a value, lessons or blessings. When we have lost that refreshing innocence of not being able to find joy and pleasure in everything that concerns us, then we have an issue in sustaining our quality of gratitude. Dan Harmony of Five Gifts of an, for an Abundant Life supports this by her statements. She says, gratitude is the gift of being thankful. What a wondrous present to receive and to give. In living an abundant life, giving the gift becomes the prayer of the heart. Giving the gift becomes the prayer of the heart that opens your life to riches contained in it. Through its magical use, you begin to appreciate every wonder of your journey." End of quote. She also speaks of gratitude as a love vibration. When we are grateful, we exude a feeling tone of acceptance and appreciation. When we take things for granted, you know what happened? We close off our awareness to the flow of love between us for persons, places, and things. And if gratitude is the prayer of the heart, you can see some congestion there somewhere, don't you? Mm. What is in th from the sense of getting rich states? The moment we permit our mind to dwell with dissatisfa dissatisfaction upon things as they are, we begin to lose ground. Do not fix attention on the ordinary, common, squalid, and mean. But we must fix our attention on the best we can see in all things and surround ourselves with the best we can give to ourselves.
He gives a bit of advice not to waste time discussing the shortcomings or wrong actions of anyone, not even politicians. We must give thanks for their presence as they prevent an anarchy, he says. Wow. <laughs> That one can I have to take that one with some honey, but anyway. We must sustain and protect our mental household, keeping our eyes single and seeing the best in all things. The University of Southern California, through their sci social psychology studies on grant gratitude, the convener Robert Emmons stated gratitude is a practice or a discipline, so even if it doesn't come natural, Naturally, people can develop the skill. It is a choice. We can choose to be grateful even when our emotions are steeped in hurt and resentment. Or we could prefer life circumstances to be different. This shift in focus from the inside, that is us, to the outside others is the key to reaping the benefits of gratitude. They found from their research that benefits included improved well-being and mental health. It can assist per, um, persons to curb depression and anxiety. It improved cholesterol levels, better sleep, and persons soon engaged in more exercise, grateful for the lovely bodies that you have, and which meant better blood pressure levels. So give some reason to that, some, think, some thinking to that. Other benefits noted by author Dan Harmony included the purifying of emotional responses to life by focusing on expressing thanks and leaving fear, doubt, worry, shame, and blame behind. Reverend John and Reverend Michael and Carol can attest to that. Harmony states, and she suggests that we cannot express and experience appreciation at the same time, same time with other emotional responses. So as one continues to be grateful, the seeming negative reactions are lessened, weakening, and tend towards losing their momentum, leaving one to experience light and love. She continues that the practice activates the metaphysical law of increase and therefore opening the door for the multiplier effect of attracting and manifesting experiences that lead to increased feelings of gratitude. Over time, the practice of gratitude places us on the witness mode, allowing the individual to free oneself from the tendency to judge, condemn, or even label circumstances to anything but good. She noted that we will find ourselves lifted into a new and welcome perspective as beholders of the great divine perfection as the preferred pattern of our life. She says we will come into harmony with our essence and the intended intrinsic vision of our life's existence, our reason for being, the reason why we are here. Our inherent nature, friends, is to move towards our good. And that will permit detachment from conditions by appreciating all life as an unfoldment, even if circumstances or experiences with other individuals may appear not up to our expectation. But under the clarifying rays of a grateful heart, one now becomes open and receptive to the hidden gifts of the experience. Gratitude provides the grace that allows revisioning to take place in our linear lives, working its magic, she says, with every strand of past, present, and future into perfect jewels which let in forgiveness, which allows us to be grateful for persons, past events, placing us for in a greater regard and respect for all circumstances. Friends, the value is phenomenal. As this assists us in growing upwards and onwards on the ever spiraling pathway of life. We can now pay attention to the present without the flood of the past shadowing our enjoyment of now. We can now see the gifts in now because we are now aware of them. Once we are present to the moment, 
the tyranny of negative attachments to blame, shame, and resentment and guilt is dissolved. We now can make sense of the past, see with clear eyes the pattern we want to inculcate in our consciousness. We can sense the rhythm and beauty in life as we extract the pearls of grace and wisdom from events gone. So what? We stop judgment, and this is what I like. We come to see the holy in all things. We come to see the holy in all things. And this kind of consciousness allows us to truly manifest what it is that we want to desire and what we are worth. So we can move from limitation to the passion of possibilities without attachment as to how or where our good is to come from. Practical tips that permit us to experience this endless state of grace and grat gratitude. One, take time every day to quiet the mind and affirm gratitude for all blessings in our lives even those not yet revealed in our manifest experience. Learn to count the blessings. Lull yourself to sleep with the last thought of thank you. Always include in daily spiritual practice, number two, a prayer of gratitude for those who have contributed to our well-being, far and near. Third, give constant praise and be thankful to all who serve us in any way. Show appreciation in tangible and non-tangible ways. Ibo asked us this morning to smile as an investment. Give it freely and lovingly. Five, bless everything in sight, as well as the abilities, talents, and what it is that we have brought on this plane to share. One of our members of the young adult group placed on her gratitude list her feet. If you remember um, Tina Turner, she, what, she, her insurance was what, one US million dollar for her feet, so you look at your feet. It's 70 million dollars per foot. You understand what you have to give thanks for? You don't even know how you get to stand up. So when this little girl looked down on her feet and, and put that on our list, I was moved. The others in that same young adult, because this was their homework last week, five things that they were grateful for. Strange enough, 50%, I shouldn't say that, 50% of the class had on food, parents, friends on the list. But one person had our church community on that list. Can anybody guess who? All right. I'll give you a book if you guess. What is that? No, I, no, I'm not in the Sunday school. I'm the teacher. Did some, I heard it. No, she wasn't here. Ebo, yes. Ebo Duhaney, who came up here this morning. He had our spiritual community on this list. We're doing something right somewhere, friends. As we value our family and friends, let us truly give thanks for, this, for them as they are in our lives and affairs to teach us, to nourish us, to keep us on track. And above all, let us stay connected. You have social media. You don't have to send letter with post office again. <laughs> Call them, WhatsApp them, email them, do anything but stay connected to family and friends. It is priceless, believe me. We must use up what we have. The value is in the use of our possessions. We are worth the Wedgwood crystal that we have pack up for future use. Take them down and eat and share with them, please. I may have to put up my hand to have some crystal glass from a married and I need to, I mean, and I'm divorced and I think I need to take them out. <laughs> I need to take them out. Our Judo Christian Bible reminds us Lift up your eyes and look on the fields that they are white already unto harvest. That is what a grateful heart does for us, friends. A grateful heart utilizes and moves us forward that we can truly enjoy from that infinite field of abundance. 
So let us practice, 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 and live from this grateful heart. It indeed is our prayer once you practice it. In conclusion, Melody Beatty says, gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. Namaste.